How are you? Thanks for joining us. Thank you, I'm very well. Down I'm here back well. in Canton at MTV. And yes. um, you're here to discuss this brand new album, amongst other things, Years yes. of Refusal. Mm. And um, in the introduction I just did, um, it, it talks about this being a sort of a rare and special interview, which I'm hoping it will be. Mm. Um, but but do, do, do you still, still feel that when you talk to people on TV and stuff that it's rare for you too? Um, I, I don't do it very often. Mm. I don't do it very often, so it's very rare, yes. <laughs> why is that particular? You know, why, why, is it just something you don't particularly I feel comfortable with? I think I reached a point where I was being repeatedly asked the same, same questions. questions. And when you're asked the same questions, you obviously give the same replies, because mm. you can't keep give, di giving different replies. Or you make something up which gets even more Yeah, trouble. but uh, that's, that's not very enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just felt that I, I, I would stop for a while yeah. and just see how it continued. Bliss. Must have been bliss. Bliss? Um, <laughs> mostly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to hell. Thank um, you. I'll do my best not to ask you the same questions. I, I can pretty much guarantee this, this, the, the first line of questioning is, is, is fresh because the photo is mm. the, the cover art for the latest single, You and Your Band of Seven Inches. Yes. Um, which is, for those people that haven't seen it, is uh, something probably quite unexpected for Morrissey fans. Uh, it's You and Your Band, stark naked except for the aforementioned yeah. Seven inches yes. placed yeah. over mm. the uh, the important stuff. <laughs> the stuff that we can't mention. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's talk about the inspiration behind that photo, because it it's, it's a bit left of field. It was uh, very off the cuff, and I, I couldn't think of any reason why not to. Right. Really. I mean, it didn't strike me as offensive. or I mean, if anything, it's, it's, it's amusing. Of course. Um, it's very funny. Well, it's not that funny, but it's like... Is it supposed to be funny? It's not supposed to be that funny. <laughs> it's but hilarious! Sure, but it's slightly amusing. <laughs> slightly amusing. I mean, women do it, so men should do it, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the song is a single, the first track to, that, that, that people have, have been exposed to from this new album. Um, isn't how the album starts. The album starts with a song called Something is Squeezing My Skull. Yes. And that's a fierce opening. Yes. And you know, lyrically as well, it's um, you know, it's pretty. It's a strong start for you. It's a, it's a, it's a good observation on modern society trying to find some kind of feeling in the face of yes. the mind numbingness of yes, all that other stuff. Mm. Um, was that an easy lyric for you to write? Very, very easy. Yes, because uh, because um, immobilization, which I see everywhere, people mm. are immobilized. Um, it comes very naturally to me. You observe these kind of things. Yes, I do. I do. I, I see people as being very lonely and immobilized. Yeah. A lot of people try to ignore that side of things and they go about their life numbing well, themselves. Well, there's no point. You know? There's no point because it's there and it's what we are and it's how everybody is. And uh, yeah. as time speeds up, uh, nothing changes. People become more lonely. Mm. And the more they surround themselves by electronic gadgets, they become more isolated and lonely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there'll be a re reaction against that. You uh, definitely identify on the record straight from the start that this is a very live sounding record and a rock mm. and roll record. You yes. know. Um, was it recorded as such in, a, you know, in the booth a lot? Uh, no, not really. It was, it was quite methodical. But uh, the players are very, very, um, shall we say... Uh, they're sharp. They're very physical musicians. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and the music that I like the most is the music that makes me feel very um, physical. Yeah. How long have this band been with you now? There's been a few Bits changes. Bits and pieces for a very long time. Boz for a uh, while? Yes, Boz for many years. And uh, other members just uh, the last couple of years. Do you get particularly sort of emotional when, when members leave, or is it so just part of the... No, I get very emotional, emotional, but mostly they leave of their own accord. Mm. They want to do something else, or in their language, they want to move on, mm -hmm. and, which is fine. But no, I, I do feel quite sad because the musicians are um, handpicked. Really, they're not just anybody who turns up to play. Of course. So um, it's also been a very important part of your your life since the Smiths. And even though you've presented yourself out there as a as an individual artist, mm -hmm. you've always had that band behind you, and you've always, in photos, presented yourself for a lot of time yes. as a gang. Still, yes, that's very very true, and that's the way I prefer it. To, to be honest, I didn't ever intend on being a solo artist. Mm. I had the situation thrust upon me and uh, but for the most part I do like the the band mentality. As you say back in the day just to, not, not to reflect so early on the interview but to cast your mind back to that moment when you decided you wanted to pursue music but it really mm. it had to be as a solo artist was it just a case of not having the time to find a band or 
um, being burnt out post Smiths? Well, the, the, the Smiths ended um, against my wishes. Mm. So uh, suddenly I was solo. Mm. And um, I was contractually signed to EMI here and Warners in the US. So I had to fulfill that contract. So in a sense, I had no choice, but um, all for the best. Yeah, of course. It's worked out in the end. It was, it was simply fate, and it ha almost had nothing to do with me. And, uh, do you believe in that? Do you believe in fate? Uh, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm. When it comes to handpicking the musicians, as you put it, mm. choosing the players, yes. um, say so Jesse Tobias comes and yes. does he audition for you? How does it work? Uh, he, he didn't audition, no. He, he, but um, the point is that I couldn't simply play with session musicians or people whom I didn't like. That's more to the point. Yeah. Um, so you know what he's done before and you personally um, go to him or he's uh, No, or? no, I know what he did before and it didn't really matter. <laughs> it didn't really matter. <laughs> I, I simply liked him and uh, he fitted in very, very well. Yeah. You get the impression with the band as well is that, is that when they talk about your music and they talk about the records they make and everything else, it's obviously with a lot of passion and a lot of enthusiasm because they're involved in it. Yes. But it, they, they, it's a, they're protective of you as well, aren't they? I mean, there really is a sense of like... Yes, there is. You are their charge. Well, I think so, and I think it's because I'm, uh, I'm criticised greatly, and this angers them enormously, mm. and it confuses them as well, so they become more protective. You know, you're so quotable, and that's, I think, a big part of why people decide that it's better to have Morrissey in the press against his wishes or against perhaps what he said than otherwise. Mm. Um, Mm. This love-hate relationship with all this, or is it just hate-hate? <laughs> I think for the most part it's hate-hate, really. Does it, it, must, it must surprise you to this mm. day, though, given that I've met you several times and I would never profess to know you well, mm. but my experience with you has always been pleasurable talking to you and I've always enjoyed your music. That's all that matters to me. Yes. Yet mm. somehow people find this other side of you and write about it. I think it's because I have an audience that's very, very dedicated and that really annoys a lot of people. They don't like it. Because it's, it's the criticism of envy, if you like, because they know you're going to run and run. And even if you stop making music, your name will always be mentioned somehow. Hmm. So it says, uh, regrettably, it's, it's jealousy. That must be a great fear of yours, that one day if you do decide to stop making music, that's not going to stop. The writing's uh, not going to stop. I don't think it will stop. We 